Okay, so we are going to go over our support slides for manicuring. Um, so once you've learned the fundamental techniques in this chapter, you will be officially on your way to providing clients with a professional manicure. A manicure is a cosmetic treatment of the hands involving cutting, shaping, and often painting of the nails, removal of the cuticles, and softening of the skin. And again, this is a fast-growing um, service on salon and spa menus. So we need to adhere to our state government regulations, your scope of practice, the list of services that you are legally allowed to perform in your specialty in your state. If you perform services outside these regulations concerning allowable services, you may lose your license. Um, an example of that would be hair design. Hair design did not um, cover the skin, so therefore legally you are not allowed to wax eyebrows. So make sure that you are aware of that. Um, so when we do manis and pedis, um, we have tools that we work with and some are referred to as equipment, others are implements, materials, or products. Um, equipment would be your table and lamp, um, your chairs, your finger bowls, disinfection, arm cushion, service cushion. If you have a container, you keep your gauze or cotton wipes in. Some other examples would be your trash containers, your supply tray, if you have a electric polish dryer or UV or LED light, electric hands, foot mitts, terry cloth mitts, paraffin or a ventilation system. Multiple use implements are your metal pushers, your nail nippers, your tweezers, and your nail clippers. Um, and these are things that you need to scrub with hot soapy water and then rinse and dry and then soak for 10 minutes in your submersion disinfectant. So your metal pusher is used to push back excess cuticle and you don't want to use a lot of force behind that because you can cause trauma. Um, nail nippers are used to trim away dead skin. It's never used to trim away the entire epinicium. So we just kind of remember I showed you as we push, we just kind of float across to get the excess. And then, of course, nail clippers are used to reduce filing time as we cut off excess length. And again, everything must be disinfected between each client. Single use implements would be brushes and applicators, a wooden pusher, also referred to as an orange wood stick, a nail brush and an application brush, you know, that could be used um, for oils. And um, of course, your polish comes with an application brush or any other treatments. In a client-to-client -client scenario, you would need to use a dropper. You don't want to take a brush and touch it from person to person and keep dipping it into your oil to put that cuticle oil on. So make sure you buy one that has a dropper. Remember, these things should not come in contact from person to person. The nail polish brush it's, is okay to do that. Um, some other materials would be gloves, a dust mask, um, abrasive files and buffers, a two-way or three-way buffer, a single-use or terry cloth towels, gauze, cotton pads, or metal or plastic spatulas. Because remember, if it's a jar product, we never dip our fingers in there. We have to use a spatula. So your files come in different degrees of abrasiveness. Um, so the lower grit abrasives are less than 180. So um, these are aggressive and will quick, will quick, pardon me, quickly reduce the thickness of any surface. Um, medium grits run, are range from 150 to 180. These are used to smooth and refine, and 180 is used to shorten and shape natural nails. Um, fine grits are with those with a uh, 240 or higher grit rating. Uh, we don't want to use files that are too abrasive on our natural nails because they're like pastry. Again, they're made of layers and you, remember we need to file from corner to center, corner to center, so we don't break down those layers and then cause an issue with the nails. So make sure you're paying attention to the abrasiveness of that file that you pick up for natural nails. The higher, the more abrasive ones are for acrylic artificial nail surfaces. 
So some professional nail products, um, soaps, polish remover, creams, lotions, and oils, cuticle removers, nail bleach, colored polish, enamel, lacquer, or varnish are some of the other um, terms used to describe it, gel polish, and base coat. Um, so, of course, soap and warm water are used to clean um, the technician and client's hands. Liquid soaps are recommended. Um, bar soaps can harbor bacteria and become a breeding place for pathogens. So, you really don't want multiple people on a bar soap. Polish remover, again, this removes the polish. Um, some contain acetone or um, ethyl acetate, and acetone is a colorless inflammable liquid. Miscibles with water, alcohol, and ether and has a sweetish odor or burning taste, and it's used as a solvent. Um, nail creams can come in lotions or oils, and these are des designed to soften the skin around the nail plate. Um, nail creams are a barrier product because they contain ingredients designed to seal the surface of the skin around the nail and hold in subdermal moisture. Now, oils are designed to absorb into the nail plate to increase flexibility into the surrounding skin and to soften and moisturize and typically oils have a longer lasting effect cuticle removers these are designed to loosen the dissolved dead tissue from the nail plate for easy removal nail bleach helps to remove yellow discoloration or stains such as tobacco um, they can contain h2 h2o2 and some other keratin bleaching agent and you want to use those as directed um, colored polish, enamel, lacquer, or varnish, I think we're all familiar, and then gel polish, which can, which can last longer, 10 to 21 days, and either needs to be cured LED or with a UV, and then a base coat, and this helps to improve the adhesion of the polish, and then our top coat helps to um, maintain the longevity of our manicure, and some contain a drying agent. So there are hardeners. There's different types of hardeners um, made for specific issues. Some may say it's for peeling nails. Some may say it's for brittle nails. Some may say it's for um, nails that are too soft. Again, you want to read your labels and see what is appropriate for that uh, particular client's condition. Um, dimethyl urea hardeners, these uh, add cross links to the natural nail plate and they do not cause reverse skin actions. A top coat again is to add shine, prevent chipping, um, and they use acrylic or a cellulose type of former. We have hand cream or lotions. These add a finishing touch, because a lot of times your client's skin will feel a little dry after you've exfoliated and removed polish and everything. So we need to put some moisture back in it. Nail conditioners um, can help reduce the brittleness of the nail plate, moisturize the surrounding skin. There's really a healthy nail is flexible. You know, it's got a little give so it doesn't break so easily. If you're, if someone's nails are really hard and snap, if they bump them a little too hard, then their nails are lacking moisture. And then sunscreens. Now, with the advent of this gel polish, and initially everybody was using UV um, lamps to cure it, you need to have some sun protection on your client's hands. If you're going to, if they're going to continuously put their hands in that UV lamp, there have been cases of cancer that have occurred on fingers. You can also purchase fingerless gloves that help to protect the hand um, while it's being exposed to the UV. Um, the basic manicure is the foundation of all nail technology services. So you have three parts. You have your pre-service where you're cleaning your tools and your prep. You have your service and then you have your post-service. Um, Post-care can include booking their next appointment, sending them home with um, a bottle of the polish that they chose in case they need a touch-up. Um, oils, lotions, um, different products, you know, maybe a little aromatherapy scrub or something they can use at their bathroom sink. Um, there's endless ends a product out there that you can implement into your manicure service. So hand washing prevents the spread of communicable diseases and we're going to wash our hands before and after each client. We're going to have the clients wash their hands um, before each service and we're going to provide clean nail brushes. We do not use a nail brush from person to person. We do not use files from person to person. Those big fluffy brushes that 
a lot of people like to use to brush off the acrylic dust. There have been um, surveys, tests done on these brushes, and fecal matter was one of the um, contaminants that were found on these brushes because not everybody washes their hands like maybe you and I do. Um, so you need to be very suspicious of that too because you're going to go wash your hands they're going to proceed with this service and they're taking out this big fluffy brush that everybody and their mother has used and you don't know that person's particular hygiene so those really give me the creeps hand sanitizers do not replace hand washing we need that 20 uh, second exposure to the soap we need to be rubbing our hands um, going under our nails. Um, the nails harbor a lot of bacteria to have a properly cleaned hand. And it's the friction that helps to remove a lot of the germs and viruses. So you have your intake form or you can do an oral intake and just ask the clients if any problems, issues they're having. You know, do you have any um, conditions or illnesses that might cause uh, adverse reaction during the service? Um, there's a couple ways that you can go about that. You can discuss um, their preferences. Are they sporty and want a shorter nail? Are they more glam and want to tote longer nails? Um, and again, you're going to check the nails and scan for any signs of disease or disorder. So here are some basic nail shapes for women. We've got squoval, we have square, we have the round, um, we have the oval, and then the pointed. Um, so it just all depends on your client, their preference, um, you know, everyone's different. So you can help them choose a color that complements their skin tone or coordinate with their clothing. Um, you can allow the client to choose and some people are more avant-garde and they want those crazy wild colors and some people want to stay more neutral or stick to pinks and reds, you know, which are just the traditional standbys. So it's all up to the client. So when we're applying polish, we're going to have a base coat. Um, we're going to apply two coats of polish and a top coat. We need to do this in thin, even layers. And we place the brush in the center of the nail. We push a little bit to spread the brush and we start center, side, side. Give a little bit of drying time in between your coats. You don't want to slap on thick coats of polish because all you're asking for is, you know, for it to get smudged or pushed up. A disaster and then the client's not going to be happy with you so less is more and have a little patience and don't get in a hurry and of course top coats a lot of them have a drying agent that will help to surface dry but the client still needs to be careful not to bump or um, press their fingernails hard against something that could imprint um, men you know are into the manicure services um, their nail shapes are usually rounded. You know, they enjoy the massage, the exfoliation. Some of them may ask for a clear or um, a top coat. Um, and there are different ways you can market to men. Um, and we know that, you know, there are uh, all different kinds of lifestyles, different people. And, you know, men can ask for colored nails too. So it's just all about client preference. So we want to complete a hand and arm massage. This promotes blood circulation, relaxes muscles. It can relieve pain, soothe and relax the client. You know, someone like us that uses our hands a lot, um, you know, that massage can really be beneficial at the end of a hard day. So again, we've got our general movements of massage that we use. We use the effleurage, which is gliding. Petrissage is kneading or lifting or squeezing. Tappament, rapid tapping vibration this is trembling or shaking and friction which is pressing one layer over another and just like we incorporate these into a facial they can be used on the arms and the legs and the feet and the hands so the differences between spa manicures and basic manicures this requires extensive knowledge of nail care and skin care um, usually include a relaxing massage and exfoliation may include um, oils, paraffin dips, hand masks, warm moist towel applications. It's all your recipe. You know, how basic do you want your basic to be? How spa do you want the spa to be? Um, you know, if you're a independent technician, of course you can come up with your own 
um, recipes or you can follow the salon standards for the services they have placed on their menus. You can do themed manicures, you know, sometimes 4th of July, we like to get, you know, stars and stripes on our nails or, um, you know, if it's getting close to Halloween, do the black cat. You know, it all depends on client preference and your level of skill if you're into that. Um, another idea is you can serve light refreshments. I do believe you have to have a liquor license in Georgia to be able to serve in a salon. Double check that. Um, I know some of them just serve wine. But make sure, you know, that you check that so you don't get uh, into any issues with code enforcement. Um, some examples of themed, you know, chocolate wonder manicure, pumpkin fall festival. You could use scented products. Um, actually, chocolate pure cocoa has a lot of antioxidants in it. We're not talking about melting a Hershey bar on your client. It, you would be using the cocoa powder. And some people enjoy the smell. A waterless manicure is one that's not soaked in water. Um, you can use cuticle softener and lotions with heated mitts to soften up and put moisture into the skin. Um, and I prefer this method to water because you don't want to leave people soaking too long in water because it does absorb some. And then when you go to your polish service, you know, if you've over soaked the nail, it's going to start drying out and it'll shrink back a little bit and it will pull away from your polish application. So aromatherapy, you know, aromatherapy is everywhere these days. Um, it's in diffusers, it's in um, room fresheners, it's in lotions and potions that we use on our body. Uh, you can buy the little bottles of the pure essential oil, but you always want to mix them with a blended oil like almond oil, sunflower, um, other different oils that may be out there available. Um, to add the essential oil to, you know, you're supposed to have it in a care or you can put it in a lotion. I've seen some that have a lotion that you add your oils into, um, but there has to be something to carry the essential oil because it in its pure form can be an irritant to some people. So paraffin, this is a petroleum based product um, that you put the blocks of the paraffin into the warmer and you have it melt down and of course your client's going to have clean hands and you're going to help them dip three to five times coming up you know and letting the hand drip a bit before you redip letting the wax harden a little bit and then you can put a liner over that in a heated mitt so this is going to help do a light exfoliation it's going to push oils and moisture a little deeper into the skin and we don't reuse paraffin. Once it's been applied to a client, it goes in the trash. Years ago, I have seen places that were reusing paraffin and everybody's dead skin and bacteria and everything else is going in there for somebody else to dip into. Very unsanitary. Do not do that. Um, a lot of different polish options, nail art options, of course, you know, the French. Uh, color fading, the ombre, color blocking. Maybe you're doing, you know, one color on one side and another color on the other side. Marbleizing. One of the ways I've seen marbleizing done is to use distilled water and to drop, do different drops of different colors, and then they tape all around the person's nail and just dip the finger under the surface and it came out marbleized and there's youtube videos out there just make sure if you youtube and that you're, you're looking at someone who's a licensed professional um, i don't doubt that there's some unlicensed individuals out there that are very very talented but you need to maintain to a standard of professionalism as a licensed person and make sure that you're following safety and infection control here's some other examples of nail art um, embellishments, crystals, little beads, 3D, um, the coffin nails as these are called, again each to their own. So in summary we learned about nail equipment and supplies. We know it's important um, about infection control when it comes to nail services um, and again there's a lot of trade uh, magazines. Of course we know the videos abound um, and beauty shows where you can view new and innovative products. So thank you for joining me today.